Speaking of inquiries, Mr. Speaker, what does the government have to hide? Why don't they allow the Senate to hear Michael Rooney? We know he's the Conservative Party's own auditor, but what if they have nothing to hide? Do they have an interest in blocking Rooney's testimony? Why do they keep interfering in the Senate? Why block this testimony? As you know, uh, the auditors uh, already have, in fact, testified uh, before the Senate and have testified as to the uh, integrity of their audit. We're here from the Leader of the Opposition. All of them, except one. Hmm. The one his friend, Irvin Gerstein, phoned hmm. to try to influence the audit of Mike Duffy. He knows that that's the one we're talking about. We've got an 81-page report from the RCMP that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that his office has been controlling everything in the Senate. Why are they blocking Rooney if they've got nothing to hide? The right honourable Prime Minister. The auditors who performed the audit have already testified before the Senate and testified as to the integrity of the audit. Mr. Speaker, according to sworn police documents, the Prime Minister's office conspired with Senator Gerstein to mess with Deloitte's audit of Mike Duffy. Nigel Wright asked Gerstein personally to intervene. Another PMO staffer, Patrick Rogers, pressed Gerstein to get Deloitte, quote, locked in. And Gerstein tried. Through senior partner Mike Runia, he tried to breach Deloitte's ethical walls, contrary to the most sacred principles of the auditing profession. So why is Gerstein still the Prime Minister's hand-picked chair of the Senate Banking Committee? Great question. The Honourable Prime Minister, Secretary of the Prime Minister. Uh, of course, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the, uh, as the Senate uh, heard from the three auditors uh, in question, those three auditors uh, confirmed the integrity of the, uh, of the audit that was completed on behalf of the Senate, Mr. Speaker. Of course, that was the basis by which uh, we, uh, the Senate, fought to uh, ensure that those three senators were uh, removed from the Senate without pay, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. The Honourable Member for Rostana. Mr. Speaker, Gerstein's scheme with Runia to mess with an audit was not an isolated transgression. According to sworn police evidence, Gerstein also agreed to pay Duffy with Conservative Party money as long as it was only $30,000. That would be against the law, but Gerstein's concern was not about principles, just the price. And yesterday, in a blatant conflict of interest, he himself ruled on a conflict complaint about his own conduct. If Gerstein can't tell right from wrong, why does he still have the Prime Minister's full confidence? Great. Honourable Prime Minister, Secretary of the Prime Minister. Uh, of course, Mr. Speaker, uh, as the, the documents uh, quite clearly outline, uh, the RCMP uh, uh, are looking into the actions of Senator Duffy and to the actions of, uh, of Nigel Wright, Mr. Speaker. Uh, of course, Mr. Speaker, as I just uh, said, uh, the uh, three auditors appeared before a Senate committee, and they were very clear in the fact that this audit had been done with complete confidentiality and that the Senate could have confidence in the report uh, uh, that it used as the basis to remove these uh, three senators from the uh, Senate without pay, Mr. Speaker. The report that the RCMP, uh, uh, that he references with the RCMP, quite clearly identifies that the Prime Minister also advised his office to work with the RCMP to provide as much information as they required, Mr. Speaker, and the report does go on further to say that the Prime Minister had no knowledge uh, that this was uh, being undertaken, and as the Prime Minister has said, had he known, of course, he would have put a stop to it right away. Hier, j'ai demandé au Premier ministre si son bureau avait violé la loi en supprimant des courriels qui devaient être conservés. Aujourd'hui, son bureau blâme Benjamin Perrin. Est-ce que le Premier ministre réalise qu'il est en train, en fait, d'admettre que la loi a bel et bien été violée? Le Président, comme euh, je dis, le 
c'est la responsabilité euh, du personnel de, de, de décider de respecter les droits sur euh, le retenu des documents. Euh, c'est la bureaucratie qui garde ces documents. Et la bureaucratie, quand il, euh, il devient conscient de sa, sa position, de ses documents, on donne ces documents à, à la GERC. Mr. Speaker, the bureaucracy made me do it was yesterday's answer. Today's answer from his office is, it's Benjamin Perrin's fault. Why does the Prime Minister's story keep changing? Say, of course, once again, what I said yesterday, there are rules in terms of uh, retention of records. Retained records are uh, kept uh, by the bureaucracy. When the bureaucracy, as soon as the bureaucracy realized it had information that was relevant to the investigation, it immediately made that information known and turned it over to the RCA. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Is everyone in the Prime Minister's office to blame except the Prime Minister himself? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Honourable Prime Minister. On the contrary, as the RCMP said in its recent court filings, uh, the Prime Minister's office has uh, not only provided a full assistance and cooperation, it has provided all and any documentation that the RCMP has required. Hey! The opposition. Let's talk about the RCMP's ability to do its job without interference. The Privy Council office warned lawyers representing the Prime Minister's staff that their emails had been handed over to the RCMP. Why did the Privy Council office, I remind the Prime Minister, he's in charge of that office, that reports directly to the Prime Minister, though, warn potential suspects that their emails were under investigation by the RCMP? Any right, Honourable Prime Minister. Once again, Mr. Speaker, I think the RCMP itself has been uh, extremely clear on this matter. Uh, all and any information that has been requested uh, from our office has been given to the RCMP and the RCMP has praised that, and that's what we will continue to do. What is, what is, what is, what is uh, unacceptable here is the event that took place, the uh, payment that was not properly disclosed and was misrepresented. Uh, for that reason, we've taken action, and the two individuals in question are under investigation. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. See, Mr. Speaker, the RCMP doesn't warn people that there's an investigation going on, but the Prime Minister does, especially when they're people who worked for him. Le 28 mai, le Premier ministre a dit, je le cite, il n'y a pas d'entente légale entre Duffy et Wright. Pourquoi alors y a-t-il des courriers entre l'avocat de Mike Duffy et l'avocat du Premier ministre négociant spécifiquement exactement une telle entente? Let me, uh, let me correct uh, the uh, misinformation that was contained in the preamble to that question. The Leader of the Opposition has asserted that there are members of the Prime Minister's office that are under investigation. That is, of course, not what the RCMP has said. The RCMP has made very clear there are two individuals under investigation. They are Mr. Duffy and Mr. Wright. These are, these, these are, these are the individuals against whom uh, we've taken appropriate sanction, and we'll continue to cooperate with the RCMP. The opposition. Did the Prime Minister know about the original plan to pay off Mike Duffy's expenses using money from the Conservative Party, yes or no? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I've said repeatedly, it was always conveyed to me that Mr. Duffy would repay his own expenses. Not only is that what I was told, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Duffy himself said publicly that he had done that. The fact of the matter, of course, Mr. Speaker, is that was not true. Mr. Duffy had received uh, money from somebody else who had effectively done that for him, and that was not properly disclosed and was misrepresented. And for that reason, we've taken the appropriate actions. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister's spokesman has given a clear answer to that question. It's just different. Why is the Prime Minister afraid to give a straight answer? Why is his spokesman allowed to give straight answers? Is it because his spokesman is allowed to lie and the Prime Minister is not? I don't know if those types of accusations are uh, helpful to the debate. I'd ask members to 
avoid trying to insinuate or to make implications about either sitting more parliamentarians or about using the protection of the place with a private individual who doesn't have the ability to defend him or herself. But I'll allow uh, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition to uh, pose a supplemental. Did the Prime Minister know about the original plan to have the Conservative Party pay, pay Mike Duffy's expenses? Yes or no? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, of course, I've answered that question on many occasions. It was always conveyed to me that it was Mr. Duffy who was going to pay Mr. Duffy's expenses, not the Conservative Party, not Nigel Wright, not anybody else, Mr. Speaker. We've been crystal clear on that. The Leader of the Opposition knows what the answer is to that question. He knows what the truth is. It is he who determines, to, he, he who is determined to ignore the truth. Here, here. Honourable Member for Moses Road. Mr. Speaker, this government had copies of Benjamin Perrin's emails in their possession for six months and only turned them over to the RCMP when they were asked for not once, not twice, but three times. The Prime Minister now tries to blame his department, the PCO. This is ridiculous. Did the Secretary to the Cabinet not notice this Conservative scandal? Did his boss, the Prime Minister, not mention a problem when his Chief of Staff suddenly disappeared? Is the Prime Minister's latest excuse really that the Privy Council didn't know what a court order to produce emails looks like? Of course, Mr. Speaker, we know the, uh, the Liberal Party themselves uh, seem to have trouble finding emails with respect to the Senate. Uh, uh, but having said that, Mr. Speaker, on page 21 of the exact same uh, report, uh, it says... Uh, it says that uh, Rob Staley, legal representative for the PMO, advised my office that he had clear orders from the Prime Minister to provide complete cooperation with the investigation to provide any assistance or documentation the RCMP requested, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the PMO employs current and former whose emails I deemed relevant have all provided privacy waivers through their legal counsel relating to the contents of those emails. The PMO has also uh, waived solicitor client privilege for those emails, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Bozeville. Mr. Speaker, last night, Conservative Senators protected Senator Gerstein's unethical conduct in attempting to kill an audit into Mike Duffy. Now, this isn't the first time the Conservative Party has mopped up Gerstein. When charged under the Elections Act, he only plea bargained out when the Conservative Party pled guilty for him. Nigel Wright resigned, or was fired, we're not sure anymore, for offering money to Mike Duffy. We know that Gerstein also offered money to Mike Duffy. So how can the Prime Minister still have full confidence in this now disgraced Conservative Senator Irving Gerstein? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Prime Minister. Uh, again, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, it's uh, quite clear when he talks about the audit, uh, the auditors came before the Senate and they, uh, they confirmed the fact that this audit was done with the utmost confidentiality, Mr. Speaker. At the same time, the RCMP have indicated in the documents that the member refers to that it is uh, the actions of uh, Nigel Wright and Senator Duffy that are, uh, that are under investigation, Mr. Speaker. At the same time, the audit that he referenced, uh, of course, was a basis by which the Senate used to uh, remove these three senators without pay from the Senate, Mr. Speaker. We know that the Liberals were fighting really hard for the status quo in the Senate. We, of course, fought for taxpayers, and that was the end result when these three senators were removed.